Hi everybody, uh, it's time for another video. This time I really want to showcase something that is a real passion of mine and that's collecting Ihagi Exacta cameras. So um, you've seen some previous video that I did where I showed you a couple of Exacta cameras but I've actually been quite busy um, over the years trying to acquire at least one version of all the models through the years from when they started back in 1936 up until the late 60s stroke early 70s when really the Exacta camera met its end and it got incorporated into the Pentacon organization. Uh, so you see here I've got um, nine models of Exactas um, and uh, they're, I'm going to go through them very briefly one by one and um, maybe in subsequent videos I will go through in detail some of my favorite models of these cameras. But So let's start with the, the first one. So um, this is the what they call the Kina Exacta. So this one is actually, uh, uh, mine is I think 1938 according to the serial number. But they, this was the camera that started the whole revolution of 35mm single lens reflex cameras. Uh, and it was, uh, the company was called IHG and they were based in Dresden in Germany. And in 1936, they actually released the first single lens reflex camera uh, with interchangeable lenses and inter uh, that really allowed photographers, before that point, they didn't have a, uh, a through the lens system. You had rangefinders from the likes of Leica and Contax, but you didn't have a, a, a production, you know, mass produced single lens reflex camera that took 35mm film. So it was called the Kina Exacta. I think the Kina is means cine film, uh, so it's the same format, the 35mm film. And uh, it came with a fixed waist level finder, so you couldn't change it. But essentially, uh, it was great because it was a proper, you know, professional grade camera. And uh, it allowed you to, you know, load film in it and, uh, and take pictures and interchange the lenses. And they exactly themselves never made any lenses. So uh, they, there's lots of third-party manufacturers that made lenses for the Exacta system. Um, uh, and there were lots and lots of different brands producing lots of different focal lengths. This particular lens on here is the um, uh, Carl Zeiss Jena Tessar, which is a very popular lens at the time. 2.8mm, 50mm, 2.8 um, And you can see the waist level finder pops up and you're supposed to just focus on the ground glass in the bottom and take your picture. And of course the mirror was an instant return so you had, when you wind on again the mirror comes back down so you can see the next shot. So this was an amazing camera for the time and uh, you know all these cameras that I'm going to show you today they were really aimed at the high-end amateur and professional market so they were very very expensive. If you looked up the price guides from when they were made you know they weren't available to the average person. I mean literally you, you know it would take maybe two to three months of salary to pay for one of these at the time. So you consider them to be at the top of the range camera systems out there. Um, so beautifully made, the, the engraving on the nameplate, the, just the whole, you know, this, the whole feel of it, the solidness of this camera is unbelievable. And that's what attracted me to them in the first place, was the fact that they were so solid and well made and looked beautiful as well. So. 1938-36, as I said, they, were, they, were, they started production of this camera. And, and then, of course, the war broke out. So, um, you know, there was like two to three years of production, and then the war broke out. And, of course, we all know what happened. Now, 1945, um, the factory in Dresden was destroyed. Uh, the Soviets occupied East Germany. And then um, they, they reassembled the, the workers and they started uh, you know, finding any remaining tooling, any remaining parts that were there and they started producing exactas again, which is great news for all photographers. They started making the Kina Exacta, so there are some post-war versions of this camera. Um, and, they, um, and then they started working on the new model of it. So this was the Exacta Model 2, the one I have shown you here. So the Model 2 camera is very similar to the original. I think the body is almost identical. It's my cat coming in the shot. Uh, almost, the same, um, almost the same as the original camera. Uh, some slight changes to the front plate. 
um, but still a waste level finder that you cannot move um, and again interchangeable lenses the, the backs are very similar here um, so you can literally um, you know you can say this is the next iteration of the camera um, and, and um, yeah again it's a great camera um, it's very similar to the first one so this is probably late 40s late 40s the Kina Exacta 2 if you like um, and then they had uh, obviously the next iteration is bigger change now so they decided as a systems camera uh, they wanted to uh, allow people flexibility to change those waist level finders for prism finders and other finders you know for scientific work so the next version called the Exacta Varex so you can see a mark changed in the way this looks um, again um, the, the back itself is very similar so th this is a removable back so it's a bit stiff to take out in this particular one but it's a completely removable back so you can see the the, um, the back here with the front plane uh, but um, the camera itself is uh, again uh, beautifully made beautifully engineered um, you've got uh, speeds from all of these cameras have speeds from one thousandth of a second down to bulb and there's uh, you had the fast and the slow speeds so uh, you have a separate dial that controls the slow speeds here um, and then you've got obviously the normal speeds from one thousand to bulb here so again precision engineering very high quality cameras um, again this was a top of the range you know people not, not the average person can afford to buy one of these um, so the Varex was the first one. I wanted to show you this because you can change the prism. You can take it off and put something else. So again, really important for professionals, for people in the scientific community. Um, and then so on, carried on early, early uh, 50s. They started with the Varex, fully interchangeable system. Next came the Varex VX. So again, uh, this was the next iteration few changes to the top, um, refinements, build quality, um, the, the back was now changed like this, it's a hinged back, so instead of you remove the back completely, uh, it's a hinged back on this system. Uh, by the way, some of these models have these film cutters, so the idea was that um, you can load two spools in here, a, a spool full of film and an empty spool, and if you then wanted to change rolls midway, you can cut the film roll it in and then develop it so you don't have to waste the whole uh, 36 exposures if you didn't want to. Uh, brilliant, you know, brilliant system uh, for the time. Um, so this is the VX, uh, again beautiful mirror camera and uh, you can see um, it's um, progressing very nicely. The design is really beautiful at that point. All of these italic lettering configurations, the the beautiful finish, everything is really solid. The, the movements, um, the, just the look and feel, feels like quality. And the last of that, if you like, high quality model, in my opinion, was the Varix uh, 2A. So this is the one that is, if you like, the ultimate before things went downhill. Um, again, just a slight variation of the VX, very, very similar. Um, for the interchangeable system, again, with, with Finder and, and obviously the, you've got a plethora of different lenses. Uh, so this was, again, very well made camera. This was probably the most expensive one of the lot, given you know, at the time when it was sold in the mid to late 50s. Um, so I would say this is the ultimate, you know, the height of the exact factory producing quality goods. And then they started cutting corners, so at this time, around this time, the Japanese came onto the market with the Nikon F, uh, the Pentax, and all of these famous Japanese brands that we all know today. And they had much more advanced systems within their cameras. They had engineered through the lens metering, uh, they had instant return mirrors, there was, there was a load of functions that the, the Exacta factory couldn't innovate fast enough. Maybe because they were behind the Iron Curtain, I don't know, maybe it's because um, you know, they lost all that, all those, the period during the war, there was no R&D, no innovation that happened during the war, but anyway, the, you know, whilst they were at the top of their game in the 40s and late 30s and, and 40s, they started to lose ground in terms of innovation 
by the time the mid to late 50s came. So they still produced exactors. So the 2A, the Varix 2A, the Varix VX 2A uh, changed slightly. So they cut down on material, became, uh, I mean, that, that sticker, sticker for the name is instead of the embossed lettering, I don't think it's as nice. Uh, the quality of the finders, the, the waist level finders, the quality of the finish. I mean, I, you probably can't tell on the video, but the, the, just the general quality of the camera is, uh, is not the same, right? It's not, it just does not feel the same as it did in those versions that I showed you before. Um, so, um, again, in my opinion, that's when things like to go downhill. So the Varix 2A with the name change, plate change, uh, was the first of those modern versions that cut down costs. And then they carried on with the, what we call a 2B. Uh, again, very similar. Um, but, the, but again, it, it just doesn't feel as good as the first ones. Um, but it works fine. It's exactly identical. The back is identical. I think the chassis was the same. It's just the finishing wasn't good. And I think the parts that they use internally were not as precise and uh, they're more prone to more problems, um, you know, more shutter jams, more winder breakages, more self-timer. In fact, this one of the self-timer broke, so it doesn't work anymore. Uh, it was just gummed up, and when I tried to use it, it just broke the whole system. So I had somebody actually remove it, so I, I don't have the self-timer or the slow timer. Uh, but uh, that's the, uh, the 2B. And the last two cameras, this is when it went really downhill. So this is in the late 60s, early 70s. So the last of these exactors with that shape is the VX1000. Can you hear that shutter and how sluggish that winder arm is? Almost like it's gonna break. And in fact, so I wanted to acquire every model. So this was, I bought a few months ago, the, the VX1000 and it still fires okay. But then I bought the uh, VX500, which was the last of that shape. And I thought, yep, I've completed my collection. And within a few days of using it, the winder just stopped working. I couldn't wind the film on. If I wind it manually, I can still cock the shutter, but I can't advance the film.